Howdy folks, it's Manning Mike, the Man Cave of Madness. We are continuing our playthrough of the Battle of St. Louis. This is American Revolutionary War in the West, uh, May 1780. Uh, we're on turn four. This is what the British drew for their card, House of Thunder, where the Native Americans don't want to go anywhere near that big, thunderous, loud cannon in the tower so none can approach within three x's and then if there are within three x's they must leave that range so here being the tower one two three so there's one two guys within range that must move out so of their six moves those two must move out and of the remaining four moves they can't have any new guys enter within three of there so they could Closer over here or over here, but that's it. So two max attacks. All right. So let's figure out how we want to move. All right. So this guy who has to move wants to come in here, get next to the enemy. He has to move anyway. So he'll move up. This guy here is going to move up. Again, we're forming this pattern here to have guys next to the wall and be able to shoot here. We're going to be able to shoot with two guys. So we couldn't shoot with all these guys if they're even if they're not retreated. Um, but hopefully in the next turn they'll have some guys left there that they can get some uh, extra shots and, and try to, to do some damage. This guy that has to move the best he can do is to move over to here. Starting to, to, to flank around. Um, this guy, we're looking for the guy with the higher. Uh, we're trying to get up and closer. Well, let's see because he's there. One, two, three, four. He can actually move over to here. Getting guys up. He'll, he can, again, he won't be able to shoot at range that turn, but. Um, so that was one, two, three, four, five, getting. One more guy going to can't move into three here. Um, so of guys that move, <laughs> can't can't really get any closer. Don't want to necessarily get here and block. Now, one thing we could do, we could pile up here. If these both two here didn't get shot at and retreated, uh, at least block this guy shooting through. This guy could try to shoot around his on the edge to here. Now, one advantage of actually moving and coming to here is that being next to this guy, he would have to shoot here at this guy anyway, and he'd having to shoot here. Um, yeah, I say let's do it. Let's get the, the bigger guys there. All right, so that's the movement. Attacks, again, we only get two, but before that is the defensive fire. And again, the the <laughs> very nasty level of defensive fire for the Spanish here, being able to shoot with all their cannons and three of their uh, regulars, that's uh, infantry or, or cavalry, that's, you know, quite, quite potent. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that is what it is. So let's start with the cannons. Uh, this guy here will shoot here, adding... Two and uh, against the six, missed. Roll the net five. He'll shoot again because he gets two because he's a swivel gun. He gets the times two, six. He hit just barely. This guy has to retreat. Um, he'll retreat up this way, not wanting to cloud that too much. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now, wherever he ends, potentially, this guy gets two shot. No, he only gets one, so he can't actually shoot here and uh, hit the guy. This guy, however, can shoot at it. Let's finish the guy that's next to it. He only gets one shot, so adding two. Misses. See, that's about it. It was... A, a five strength to do that would have hit. Um, 
this guy with his one shot. Trying to hit there. Misses. All right, so that leaves this cannon and this cannon. This guy can shoot there. These guys in range. He'll try to shoot the guy that's within two. Now, and he he moved. He moved here. These guys. These guys are next to these guys here. All started there. Um, you have to remember that those will be able to shoot. But he's going to shoot over here. And two. Oh, so many hits. Treats. And he gets one more shot, so he will shoot here. Six. Also hits. All right, retreat, retreat, retreat. And so that leaves this guy here at the end who can shoot six away. He can hit here or he can hit here. Uh, so he could either here he's sort of right along there but not to there so he could shoot at these guys uh makes sense to try to get the kills i think well <laughs> this turn only two guys see so they could either shoot you know like this pair or this pair or whatnot um Yeah, let's, let's shoot this one here. Adding two. Adding three. <laughs> two. Adding three. Six. Just enough to hit. It actually kills it because it's a disorder effect on an already disordered unit. So that was one shot. And now the other one over here. And it hits <sighs> pretty crazy powerful um, <laughs> I, I honestly don't think that the British native slash Native American lawyer have any chance to win with all those cannons being able to shoot defensive fire and three of them getting double shots <laughs> plus <laughs> regular so we haven't done the regulars yet up to three regulars all right, so um, obviously this guy's going to try to repel this guy here. So adding two, he misses, and all right, so So technically, again, that 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 non-adjacent wall slash entrenchment should should block the guy from back here. Um, oh, I can't even remember. Since <laughs> I finished the first part, of what I ended up ruling. Um, Yeah. So that is now their turn to attack. They have got to, and obviously they're going to try to see if they can get the hit and uh, cause the retreat. So technically, two things. One, one of the things it says in the special rules is, all gun platform hexes are considered buildings. So, so this building would be in the way between here and here anyway. Plus the fact non-artillery cannot shoot over any enemy, any, any unit. Um, period. <laughs> Whereas as the artillery can shoot over enemy units. Um, Artillery units may attack through intervening friendly units. Um, so 
the units on a hill, which again, there's not any here. I mentioned this last time or on the San Carlos tower can shoot over any units. They ignore all line of sight rules. So technically this guy could have like shot here. Um, but so these, these, these guys shooting their, their muskets and whatnot cannot shoot over a friendly unit even. So, so he cannot shoot there. So it is, it is their, their attack and they're going to, <laughs> it's that, that age old question is, this is an eight. Do you go for one die roll, adding two, <laughs> they're trying to roll a six to equal the eight and get the disorganized and therefore retreating result, which therefore, since these are zero, cannot do. So you do roll do your two attacks here and here, trying to get lucky, getting a six on either one or both. Or do you shoot with one of these, getting uh, you know close assaulting with one of these guys here that's at range, shooting... So if, if they had four dudes, they could have gotten, you know, two combined attacks there. But they have a choice of needing a six or needing a five or six and one. Um, I'm actually going to try the two separate rolls for a six. <laughs> if they can potentially get lucky and kill them both, <laughs> then they might actually stand a chance. But this is probably the only way that you can win is by getting lucky. So we're going to try the luck. All right, so let's start down here with this one. Attacking, basically, needing a six. That's it. Let's see. Let's move this so you can see it. Oh, I'm going to move the camera. There we go. All right, needing a six down here. Four. Well, we can't necessarily always see it. And then this one here. Oh well, <laughs> we missed and we missed. It's those pluses that are needed, the big pluses. So that's the banished portion of the turn. And now we're on to, excuse me, that's the British portion of the turn. Now onto the Spanish portion of the turn. So at the end of the British portion of the turn, this guy would rally and there was one over here from previous turn that was still disordered. It gets to rally. And so this is what Spanish drew. St. Genevieve Militia. All Spanish St. Genevieve SG infantry units attack at plus one to combat. And so those are where I put them over here. One, two, three, saying this is near St. Genevieve. This is the infantry units get plus one. Not... This is the St. Genevieve swivel gun. Evidently, they brought that with them. Um, but it's these two guys. And there's nothing within the ranges two. So if these guys had a retreat, they get a shot. So, so if they want to charge out there and attack, uh, <laughs> they can try to storm out and increase the odds of retreating. Now, the right now there are eight dead in the dead pile and the the great special victory conditions is if the Spanish uh, has eliminated no, the British eighth, but if the Spanish player has eliminated 16 or more so they're halfway there uh, I don't really think it's worth jumping out there at this point um, well well is that true? Um, they can afford to lose some units. Currently, there's none in the box. And if they cycle around and get the uh, one where they can retrieve a dead guy, I, they're going to do it. They're going to they're going to move out there. We're going to we're going to sortie. They can move five and they can attack with four. Well. Only attack with four. Well, obviously they want to attack over here, trying to team up and again, drive the guys away that are next to them. Um, 
Yeah, if they if they can actually attack with more units, it might be worth doing it. So no, they're not going to move out. <laughs> so basically, they're pretty much not going to move at all, and they're going to combine here and shoot. So shooting and shooting. Well, that, that, see, that would be two artillery shooting together. Well, now, the artillery at point blank range can potentially get an auto kill. Artillery at point blank range can get the auto kill. So the fact of these two teamed up, if, if he fired with him assisting, this attack here these two there yeah so we will do that so net adding three seven not enough to kill retreat and here so adding Six, just enough to retreat him. All right. And then this guy can get his second shot. He will shoot the guy that's only a five, adding two. You missed with that one. All right. And again, there was there was no defensive fire for the Native Americans. There's no trader unit, and that's the only one that you can get the defensive fire. So that's the end of turn four. Turn five, Manuel has one unlimited North American unit. North American, not a trader, <laughs> Tra trader. Maybe return to play and place next to any British entry symbol. So brought in the Winnebago here. Interestingly, it says next to, it doesn't say on an entry, it says next to, that's odd to me, but. That's what it says. Uh, and so they get to move eight British slash, you know, North American. Basically North American units at this point because there's no traitor again. You get to attack with six. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six moved up. There are five guys that are in range that didn't move that can potentially shoot. Uh, but now we have to do the crazy defensive fire. And we need to remember, which I may have forgotten at one point, <laughs> that the defensive fire cannot do combined attacks. Uh, so you, you can't, like, team up. Like, well, this, this these are next to each other. They have to shoot those. But if 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 one of these, like, if he were defensive fires here, well, he could actually defensive fire here and then attack here with a second shot. But he can't combine with this guy here because you cannot combine on a defensive fire attack. So let's go ahead and shoot here, adding two. Roll the two and miss. Second shot, he shoots again. Six, retreats him. Uh, we'll do the normal. Right here, adding two, misses totally. All right. Uh, 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 this guy here. Three. Oh, rolled a one and actually missed. Oh my goodness! Second shot. Five, eight. It's actually enough to kill him. He was uh, uh, running out of the six strength, uh, six defense strength guys. So shot, shot. Some one of the regulars has shot so far. Shooting here, adding two. Oh, eight. It's just enough. Just crazy. Uh, so second shot, he's going to shoot here at the five strength guy. Oh, actually missed. Um, he's shooting here. Got this next to him, adding two. 
eight. Killed another one. All right, this is just insane. Um, he only gets one shot. This guy here rolls a five and actually misses. Uh, so there's two infantry or cavalry that can shoot. Obviously, this guy is going to try to hit that guy. Oh, he missed. Amazing. Uh, again, he couldn't. No one. He can't shoot over. Uh, not within two. So that's it. So they actually didn't get to shoot. Oh, there wasn't enough within range. We fun. All right. So they actually get to shoot with six units. Um, so let's figure out exactly how they want to do that. So let's start down here. Uh, in that uh, he's shooting along here. If yeah. Um, these two are gonna, in this case, we're going to combine these two together. So, needing a five or six to hit. Uh, we're going to roll a five or six. We get a, a net six, which isn't enough to hit the defensive, just defensive eight. Um, going to start shooting down here. Needing sixes, uh, we could could team up. Uh, we're gonna try to get lucky again. Well, let's see. You can see he, they can only shoot here anyway. Well, he could shoot here and then he could shoot there. He could potentially retreat the guy off, but he's already attacked. They couldn't advance, so they might as well team up. So range shooting one shoots, one adds. So that's gonna go five or six. They roll the two. Miss again. Um, now here, potentially one could shoot. Thing is, this guy, if he retreats, potentially could could live and retreat too to either here or here. He wouldn't be able to move back into this spot um, in one turn because he only has a one movement allowance. So they would definitely fill it in with a, an infantry uh, guy, but. Uh, so it doesn't really help that much to try to shoot two separately. So we've shot one, two, three, four. That'd be it. Five, six. Um, yep. <laughs> they want to try to do because this would actually kill something. So again, needing a five or six combined. They actually rolled a six, and finally the first <laughs> eliminated gun can't retreat. You have no one to advance into there, but they've eliminated one gun. One gun. And they actually don't have enough shots left to shoot over here. Uh, so that is the end of the British turn, turn five. So we're moving it on to the Spanish. So all good shots. All Spanish, two, six, three units add plus one tax to combat this turn. So that would include him. Him, if he, say, moves up. Him, same thing, because nothing in range right now. Uh, he's a one, six, three. So these two guys over here could get a bonus. They get to shoot with four units. He, so... They are going to move up with him. Uh, they're not going to charge out, so he's not going to get to shoot this turn anyway. Well, <laughs> do they desperate? Oh, by the way, I did uh, rally. Oops, missed one. The end of the British turn to rally. Um. Hmm. This guy, see, there's there's a zone here. He could actually charge out, try to jump on. Let's see. So technically, that's considered a building. Remember, it said that the gun platform hexes are considered buildings, and the buildings you have to stop. So he couldn't move through like this. He'd have to come around this way. So he'd actually have to stop here or here. So you actually can't get next to this one. 
Let's see here. Yeah, see the implication of that. Yeah, technically you have to stop. Yeah, he'll do it. I'll get out there. There's, there's not that many guys right close right now. I mean, there's all these guys over here, but there's actually not in an overwhelmed position to be immediately overwhelmed. So, see, that would mean he'd have to attack assisted. Well, he, again, he, he moves, so he can't shoot at range. So he attacked, but he wouldn't get, I think, well, if he assisted, he's not gonna get his two shots. You get two shots when you attack. It doesn't say that you get two shots when you assist. Um, so he would rather attack here. All right, let's figure that out. All right, so something we always gotta remember, which I've been, may have forgotten at some point is, The tower artillery unit, he gets to add his entire attack factor when assisting. So so by jumping out here and this guy shooting, he, he being the attacker, with him adding, they get to add five to the die roll. And that makes it six because this guy is, getting, is attacking, getting this plus one from the card, remember? So he'd be two, adding plus one is three. Adding a full three, adding six. The minimum you can roll is a one, seven, which would be a normal hit. But on a two or more would be a kill. We're obviously going to do that. <laughs> way, way, way overkill. Goodbye, Sue unit. Uh, so that was two of the guys attacking. Over here we will shoot. Uh, so assaulting out with him shooting at ranged. Being able to add two or one, two plus the one for the card, plus one more for the assist here, adding four. Oh my goodness. Ah, they actually missed that. That's amazing. So that's four of their attacks. That's it. Oh well. Uh, in hindsight, we should have shut over here. But they were, it was maximizing their odds of. of Killing. Um, all right. So uh, yeah, did, 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 that was that turn on to turn six. Kov, second fox, reluctance. None the first time is draw. So this is a chance that the second fox uh, tribe units will leave. Um, but the second time it's played. So seven British and six. Get to move six, get to attack. All right, moving five units. Move here, move down the road to here. This guy moved over to here. And a guy move up to here and to here. So we actually are surrounding this guy here. And we only get to attack with four guys. So obviously, they want to try to take him out. And they want to try to hit him in here. But of course, defensive fire comes first. So obviously they're going to try to concentrate their shots here in an attempt to drive these puppies away. So three, well obviously he's going to shoot and he's going to want to shoot. Um, I'll just shoot as a tower. Okay, so let's let's start over here. Well, let's see, he can also shoot here. Technically, if he shoots here and retreats him, this guy could do his magic over here. Um, however, him shooting here has a chance of killing it because it's it's not at range. It's close. 
Um, but yeah, there's a the chance of wanting to save that guy. Well, we're going to start here. This guy who's next to this guy is going to have to shoot here. I mean, technically, I can have him go here first, and he could clear up, and he could shoot at one of these guys. But uh, technically, that line there, he wouldn't get to. So he's going to shoot there. Two misses. All right. Um, He wants to shoot this guy maximum chance to hit. Drive it away. Actually made it. Minimum five. So he has to retreat. Two. Away from this guy. He also doesn't mind being... Well, let's see. He's going to be within range. Well, even if he goes to this way, which is farther away from here, that guy could potentially still reach him. So he's going to go here. He's moving farther away from him. Uh, 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 uh. So one infantry has shot. This guy will try to shoot him to drive him away so that potentially he could shoot at multiple guys here. So adding two, six, just enough to... To hit, this guy retreats two. One, two. Well, these are both equally distant away. Here or here. All right. So that is two. So either can shoot here or over here. Well, the threat is here against this guy. So he'll shoot here. Just enough to make him retreat. All right, so he's already shot cannon-wise, so he gets to shoot. Now he's free and open to shoot. He could technically shoot at this guy here. Um, he's not currently in his zone of control. Uh, and he can shoot over enemy units as an artillery. So, adding, he gets to shoot twice. He's adding two. Misses. Shoots again. Another two. Missed. All right. This guy's going to shoot here, try to drive his way so he can range far and wide. So first shot there, adding two, old of four, adding two, six, hits. Here. So now this guy gets his two shots and he's adding three, but he's now at range, he can't. Well, he's at range. He can't get a, an auto kill, but he's got dudes in range. Um, so let's take the easiest shot, adding three against a five. He rolled a two, hit exactly. Another kill. Oh my God, what blood and blood and blood. Shot here, adding three. He rolled a six. It's nine. He goes, yeah. Uh, uh. All right, so how many ridiculous amount of kills is that over here, folks? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen. Only three more. So that was defensive fire. Isn't that exciting? All right, so the uh, British get to shoot with six units. Um, <laughs> they're almost left with only six units left alive. We're going to start down here. Got six guys to shoot with. We're going to shoot singles here. There's two of these guys are within range. Let's try to do that because if he succeeds, he can shoot here um, or, or there. Uh, again, retreating these guys doesn't really help that much. So retreating this guy... Uh, 
let's see. Well, yes. So so technically, is that that whole thing is if a dude retreats and you've got a guy on the attacking side that's next to the thing that's not another zone of control, he can move in. That's even if he's not part of this attack. It's that, that rule that you have to read very, very carefully, which is the only way to interpret it because it specifically says if you've not yet attacked and you advance in, you can then attack. But you don't have to attack the guy that you're that you you've you've if you're in a jam zone of control, you have to so in other words, if if he retreats him, say, and then one of these two guys retreats him. He could advance when this guy retreats. So, so we don't want to shoot him first. Um, so these guys here are all able to potentially shoot at range because they have not moved. So this guy is going to shoot. Needing a six. No. This guy's going to shoot here. Needing a six. I'd rather go for these odds here of trying to kill this gun. Six. They actually did it. All right. So there's the tiniest, tiniest glimmer of hope. Very tiny. Oh, wait. That's the gun platform they're talking about. They're meaning this specific name thing. I don't think they mean this symbol in general being, quote, unquote, a, a gun platform. That was my mistake. I forgot that this, this was actually labeled on here, that that is a building. Uh, they did not mean the starting area for these guns here, so... Never mind. Emily Latella. So these two guys have shot. So this guy. Well, so they think they can team up to try to get this here. We got lucky. We rolled that one sick. Let's 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 team up. Let's team up. All right. Close assaulting, assisting. So adding three, <laughs> trying to roll a five or a six. They rolled a five. So they got the retreat. Um, let's see. So if they end up retreating him, he can retreat to here or to here to, they gotta move away. Um, He could retreat to here. Well, actually, he's in trouble. Well, he could move this way. Yeah, they better leave this open for him because he's going to retreat down to here. All right, this guy's going to advance in, and he has attacked now. So one, two, three, four, five. So they got one last. Oh, no, he hasn't shot. Yes, no, one, two, three, four. These... He shot, he shot, he teamed up and hit. So that's four. So these two guys could potentially team up on this guy, but he now has a, a spot. He does have a spot to retreat to. Um, <laughs> uh, interesting to... Ah, yeah, we could take advantage of that. If he shot by himself and hit and retreated this guy, this guy could advance. He's a unit on the attacking side who has not yet attacked. He is still next to this hex, wouldn't be in some of those under control. He could advance in the thing and he could then attack. Again, that interpretation, I'm going to read it again. <laughs> you have to tell me after the retreat or elimination of a defending unit, one attacking infantry or cavalry unit. Again, it doesn't say one that participated in this particular attack. And that sounds like a stretch. This is attacking infantry or cavalry unit that is adjacent to the vacated hex and not an enemy that in control may move into the vacated hex. For that sentence alone, it still sounds like you should be part of that attack. But then it says, next sentence, if it is a unit that has not attacked, so it has to be an attacking unit that is not attacked. In other words, a unit on the attacking side, an attacking unit that is not attacked and is eligible to attack, i.e. you've got enough movement left, it's not 
Some, like, you can't attack with a disordered guy. There might be some other reason why you might not be able to attack, but it is an attacking unit that is not attacked, that is eligible to attack. It can make its attack after such advance, but only a close combat, i.e. it can't advance that way and then shoot at range. So, but if he shot here, causing him to retreat, he could advance, and then he could then close to combat that guy there. And that's what we're going to do, because if this guy misses, he'll go ahead and try to get another chance to shoot to make him retreat. So adding two, so on a four or a five, he'll retreat him. On a six, we'd get an eight, which would be an outright kill with this guy. So adding two... Well, the three, which comes a five, which misses. And so now this guy shoots, and he's trying to get it. He rolled a five, which succeeded. So he retreats. That makes him disordered. So he survived his sortie outside the wall, but this guy could then advance. And since he now has already attacked, he, he doesn't get to attack again. But, all right, so they've actually killed two guns... We've got the two guns over here, dead there. And they've got one unit retreated into the wall. He's up next to this guy. Um, <laughs> it still looks very bleak for them. Very, very, very bleak. I got 13, so they lose three more guys. It's over. <laughs> All right. Certain turn six for the Spanish. Soul guns. The soul guns get to add plus one to all attacks during this turn. Well, soul gun, soul gun. Both soul guns are still alive. Uh, blast, 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 blast. <laughs> so they get to sh move with five units and attack with four. So obviously they want to occupy... Uh, these areas here. Uh, let's see now. So they're obviously not going to move up to full five, but they can move up to five. Obviously down here we want to maneuver. Going to have the stronger unit move up here to try to drive him out. See, he is demoralized. He's going to come over here and occupy this. He won't be able to shoot because he moved, but they held in close combat. Hmm. Does the cavalry unit want to move out? Now, technically, you got to remember, when you cross the entrenchment, you have to stop. But this might be actually time to ride out. So you could actually ride... To here, get next to this guy. Yes, hmm. let's do it. Let's do it. Let's have some fun. Let's actually sort the with the cavalry. All right. So adding one with the swivel guns. So well, the way I interpret that, when it says add plus one to all attacks, it's, that's when they are attacking. They are the attacker. Now they could get assisted, but they they would get it the plus one when they're attacking, which they want to do anyway because they get the double shots. Um, but no defensive fire. Uh, that's such a huge, huge, huge weakness of the British side is not having. I, I, I yeah, I'll talk about in the after action review about variants to help try to play balance it. <laughs> I have some ideas. Um, all right, so no defensive fire. So obviously they want to drive this guy out. I think they're best off, in this case, just where they get, get four. They only get four. Four units. But him adding, he can be pot-shutting over here. 
This guy's gonna have to attack here, here. So he's yeah, he's gonna shoot by himself. Adding two. See if they can. Five, not enough. One. Yeah, I think he'll start shooting. I think he'll attack here and then either attack here again. If he misses, if he succeeds, he'll attack here with him assisted. So this is one guy that's attacked. So adding two, three because of the card. So two, three. That's the six. He rolls a four. Seven, he retreats. All right. Now, technically, here we go. Here is a guy that is eligible to attack. He could advance to here. You've driven him off from that hex. He could attack. Wouldn't necessarily then attack because once he's attacked, he'd have to close combat, but he could occupy this. And that's where we'd have zones here as they couldn't get into here. But he could retake that space, forming a solid wall. That makes sense to me. Well, actually, why not have this guy do it? Keep the wall. Right? Yes, makes more sense to move this guy. All right. So. So now he can shoot here. So two plus one for the swivel gun bonus on the card, plus him assisting. So one, two, three, four. Roll the three is a seven. It's not enough. It's enough to retreat him, but not enough to... Uh, A kill if it was one of those five strength dudes. <sighs> Does he want to advance? Mm, no, potentially they could get around and he'll just sit here. He can always retreat back into here. Sortie. All right. Swivel gun gets plus so him shooting and the swivel gun shooting is the same with the plus one. I think we want to shoot here because again this guy can shoot that far, he can add his three, he can kill this guy, and he could potentially shoot tower artillery from here, shooting six away with no restrictions on the sight. He could hit this guy here. I couldn't kill him at range. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. He can hit here. Oh my God, yeah. So, yeah. So this guy wants to shoot. Absolutely. So he's going to shoot here. Adding three. He missed. So let's do it again. Four, seven, kills it. All right. Hit 14, got one more. So it could have gotten luckier if he missed, hit both. He could have gotten one more. So that is turn six. It'll become turn seven for the British. So my plan wasn't to film everything, right? <laughs> Move along. It's a long game. Well, it's so close to the end here. And it's still close. Here, if they'd gotten this earlier, Winnebago stormed the lines, getting a plus two for Winnebago units. There's only, here's one, and here's one. There might be some of these uh, 
disrupted guys, but to disordered, but they all got uh, retreated from before. They'll be able to rally at the end here, but a uh, uh, whole whopping plus two. So this guy obviously can't get within range to do anything. Uh, wow. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pitiful. Um, so they get to move five units. Wow. This is so, so bad. Um, all right. So they moved up. This guy here moved over to here. He didn't want to go here because he, if he was trying to attack this gun, this guy wouldn't be able to shoot over him to help add. So by moving to here, he could assault with him assisting, potentially. Try to push him out of there. Um, oh, well. We'll see. Uh, so this guy here, trying to decide, is like, does it make sense to move over and try to assault this gun, getting a plus two. Uh, I think if he moves over here, well, he's he's within range of this guy anyway, right? And he's within range of this. He can blast. But if he's next to this guy, this guy can shoot twice adjacent and potentially have that chance to kill him off. But It's virtually impossible for them to win, but this is like their only chance. <laughs> Get rid of the guns. Um, so the defensive fire, again, the the, the, <laughs> the crazy, crazy defensive fire. Um, so we're shooting there, adding two. Who's going to get there if they're there or there anyway? Five, six, seven, he would hit. The guy's going to retreat two, which would have happened anyway. Now, technically, here's two than three. So, if he, if he stayed here and got retreated once, he'd be here. This guy could not then reach him for the second shot. Um, but he could, he could defensive fire and try to kill him there anyway. But uh, right now, he can get the second attack on defensive fire. Six hits him, kills him. I think that that could be one one rule. Well, again, we'll, we'll talk about this after action review. <laughs> it's maybe like don't allow the cannons to shoot twice on defensive fire. You can't combine nor get to shoot twice. I don't know. Maybe again they're supposed to be super powerful and wow, are they powerful? All right. Um, so that was one defensive fire. We'll wait and see here. Yep. He's going to shoot there. Adding two misses. Hits. So no matter where he retreats to. Yeah, that's six range of this guy. So he can, he can try to go this way. He'll go up the road. All right. Um, oh, that's right. He is. I don't know. Wait. Yeah, that's no. That's that's the guy that moved. He 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 he's not been shot yet. Uh, he killed him off. Roll up my brain. So he does. He he could have filled this one off if this guy didn't finish it. But God, he can hit here here. So. So he missed and he hit. So they are down the two guns. So, so he's not in range. These are in range. So he can technically shoot at this guy trying to finish him off. Enough to hit. So that's it right there. There's enough. But let them finish their turn and kill as many as they can. Um, so that was the first shot of our regulars. Uh, he'll shoot at this guy. Five missed. Yeah, well, he 
as well shoot. You know, I want to shoot at a five. I'll shoot this one down here on the road. Doesn't matter, miss. And so this guy can now shoot here. Adding three, crazy three, six hits, kills. And his shot over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way over there. Nothing blocks, huge line of sight. Oh, he actually missed. So, all right. So, six, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 units dead. Boom, game over. There it is, folks. Slaughter at St. Louis. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, over, 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 turn to seven, the, 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 uh, okay, I didn't flip this over, here we go, here we go, well, actually, no, it's not, it's not, it was, that was the defensive fire, right, <laughs> so the, the Winnebago's didn't get a chance to shoot, this guy got killed, let's see, is there any of these under here, Winnebago's, at the end of the turn, mid rally. Those are Sue. Um, wow. So, after action review. I love the escape system. As I've stated before in other videos, and this one, that there's some issues with some of the rules and how they're worded. They're not Wargamer specific enough. Um, and sometimes you have to interpret the English language and the implications of how things are written uh so <laughs> the whole thing about still about artillery shooting by itself where it says alone what does that mean does that mean one artillery piece or artillery only and not other types of units uh artillery at range i mean it really should say explicitly in a close combat, they can kill a unit outright. Even a non deserted unit shot at by artillery at close combat, i.e. not at range, at one hex away, can get an outright kill. It should say that explicitly. Um, and again, some of the rules in this system make a statement one way or the other. I can't remember. I have to go back and find them. And it's not necessarily the way that you think. <laughs> um but going by the rules as written in this one and what, what, it, what it means, and then the, that, that advancing after you clear a hex, being able to advance with a quote-unquote attacking unit, but then not necessarily meaning a unit that are participating in that particular attack, but a unit that is on the attacking side. Okay? Uh, it has to be an eligible unit. So in other words, it has to be a unit that... Uh, you know, hasn't already attacked. Well, if you've attacked and you were part of that attack, you can advance after combat. If you you uh, have enough attacks left and you, you weren't part of this attack, but you are an attacker, the attacking side, and you can advance, you could attack after that, another attack somewhere, but it could only be close combat. So if, if there was no one else around and you were, you know, two guys were next to one and you attacked with one of them and you got the guy to retreat, he retreats away two, he's now two away. So when you advanced, you wouldn't be next to him. He wouldn't be able to advance and shoot at range. Anyway, I'm, I'm quibbling on that little point there. But so, again, I, I, I love the system, though. There needs to be some tightening up of some of the, the rule wording in that. This this battle by far was the most lopsided, the 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 least play balanced, and um, in, in all of these games, the designer states very specifically that it's not intended as an exact. I'm quoting exact simulation or recreation of the actual historical events, but designed to provide a competitive game that captures some of the flavor of the battle. Well, it's it's a competitive game in the sense that it's not a cooperative game. But there's no way you can say that this is competitive for the British. Their odds of winning are, are nigh impossible. Uh, again, there might be some strategy that I'm missing here, but really, no, there's not. <laughs> uh, you could be a little more cagey at the start, not charging up into to close. The timing of the cards that give you the plus are critical. 
Um, so yes, maybe you want to maneuver a little better, stay. Well, the thing is, you know, this guy shoots six away. So you could you could all get seven away and be poised, you know, in this this arc away, and then wait. It's like those first two turns, you can move everyone and attack with everyone. So you want to take advantage of that but then again you want to wait for the opportune time for the card so it's a very interesting situation i think the defense is overpowered here so what what are some of my recommendations for possible ways to balance this to to make it more competitive because certainly if 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 his goal is not to be a simulation you can weaken the defenses here the fact that the British side only have a trader unit that can shoot defense fire. He starts with one. He potentially can get uh, another one here. Is it I think we already do that, but it's like he doesn't show up the first time he shows up later. Um, the second time around. So one optional variant is allow the trader unit and one unit per tribe each turn to defensive fire. So you could give the trader unit and three units, one per tribe, potentially defensive fire. If you don't want to give that much, if you want to give just a little bit of bonus, you could say, say, two, two, but not from the same tribe. So you could have two different native units shoot from two different tribes, defensive fire, you know, like, it's kind of like, who is currently leading each nation? There's one of the units that sort of steps up and, and uh, can do that. So that's one. Gives more defensive fire to the to the British side. All right. Two or, two or three extra defensive fires. The other, another, another possible variant is to reduce the amount on the Spanish side. Uh, one could be to say, all right, when... These cannons that get two shots, so that's the two swivel guns and the tower gun, when they do defensive fire, don't get them two shots. Just give them one. Okay, that's one thing you could do. Uh, another thing that you could do is say, mm, don't also give them three full, <laughs> all the, the cannons, and three infantry or cavalry units. You can give them one or two infantry or cavalry units. You could give them three total if you really want to restrict them and say, that's it, you get three shots. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you you decide. And then you could allow the swivel guns and the, to still shoot twice. When you activate that unit for defensive fire, you could give it its multiple shots. So that would be like the most restrictive. Like if you really wanted to balance it, the other one could be, well, uh, you can you can shoot all the cannon, but only one uh of the non-cannon units, or you could say, mm, give them three total shots, but each cannon counts as only a half. Say, for example, you could shoot, you know, three non-cannons or two cannons and two artillery pieces or four artillery pieces and one or all, you know, six. Well, how many? There are one, two, three, four. There's five, five cannons total. Uh, so you, you could do some combination of that. So reduce the amount of defensive fire on the Spanish side. You could increase the amount of defensive fire on the British side. Uh, another possibility is this entrenchment wall. Was well, an entrenchment is a wall? I mean, they show a picture of this barricade. It's part like moat entrenchment. It's it's uh, you can't see it there. I'm pointing at the picture here. You know, zoom in there. See that here? It's part wall, part like entrenchment barrier thingy. Um, so it's called an entrenchment, but it's it's more than just a trench. It's a, it's a wall. You know, look looks 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 about. They're standing there, so it's about you know four feet height or whatnot. Um, you could you could say it's not plus two. You could say that's just plus one. You could give that plus one all the way across there. 
that would be that would be a way to uh, to do that. You could you could um, I don't know make 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 a rule that uh, you know it's plus two unless the British are doing a combined attack. If they have a combined attack, so they're they're having you know like one unit assaulting and shooting at range or two units shooting at range they're bringing enough firepower to bear that you know so there could be you know some equivalent of what we call suppressive fire and, and you know mass volley fire or someone assaulting so someone shooting at range supporting the assault uh, you could say hey it's only plus one against a combined attack so not only would that combined attack give you you know, the, your your bonus, your two for the main unit, one for the one, and then say, oh, it's only going to be a one defense, something like that. So that's another variant possibility to help balance it. Uh, the other possibility might be to have, say, the St. Genevieve guys, like maybe, maybe start with the cannon here, and these other two guys show up later. You know, they don't have as many units at the start. And they show up. Uh, the turn that you draw, draw that yeah, that Saint Genevieve card, Saint Genevieve militia. You could say you could have the two infantry units show up. The guns already here, but the the, the guys show up <laughs> here on the road or, or anywhere on that side potentially. Um, that's that's something you could do. Um, You could start the fleeing city. It's clearly said that the again they had warning. They had warning that they 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 knew that the British were coming, or or, or definitely knew knew that soonish. You know they were probably going to attack. I can't remember the exact wording of the, the statement, but they did get. St caught by surprise when the natives actually attacked. Um, so they had pickets out and so they thought they were going to have more imminent when it was when it was happening and they didn't. Uh, so you could have these quote unquote fleeing citizens start have to start out here so that they're at risk of getting killed and potentially having to use some of your initial maneuvering to, to get them there. So that's another thing. You could start them out, you know, in, in one of these hexes out here somewhere you could do it. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily start them way out here, but you could make it one of these ones nearby here. Uh, so that's, that's, that's another option. Um, another thought that I have, uh, there's that... Langlade card. Langlade is the other trader, and he has two units. He only shows up on a roll of a one or two. You could increase that odds, but again, you, you have, he doesn't show up the first time this card is played. Uh, I I might say, hey, when you get this the first time, you roll a die, and on a one, he shows up. The second time, you'd roll the one or two. If you last to the third, like if, if the, the British are playing more KG and, and, and waiting to only attack when they get the plus one or plus two on the cards, you might get into turn, you know, 21, 22, 23, 4, where you potentially could draw this again, and then you could say they show up in a 1, 2, 3. Uh, what, what, so, so besides increasing the odds that he might show up earlier or, or more likely... Uh, you, you could make it, he automatically shows up on uh, turn the second time you draw this, but on the first time a one or two or a one or whatever. The other is, maybe this is a super surprise attack that they arrive by canoe <laughs> and you, you let them attack down here somewhere. Now there's this, 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 this port symbol here. Uh, there's nothing in the rules that talks about it that I can remember. No, that is the British entry symbol. It does say that they uh, arrive 
wait a minute. Entry, that's a, that's an American entry. That's that's for Rogers Clark. That's Clark sends aid. And they're from playing the Mississippi River in St. Louis this turn. That's where they enter. Uh, they make me thinking about maybe these guys attack on the <laughs> here that you can attack have them land here on on the coast. <laughs> now there's the governor's mansion. You know, maybe you 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 leave <laughs> the fixed regiment of Louisiana with its seven defense here in the governor's mansion. Because if these guys show up, ah, boom, 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 they might you know try to attack from the rear or something. Um, now that seems really kind of powerful, and I don't know, you know, uh, how far that they would really spot that. You know, this, these guys on the gun tower. To probably see that coming from a long way away, um, but maybe in all the the smoke and the gunpowder, you know, the uh, uh, maybe they wouldn't see it. So I would have to play test that variant. I would have to figure out a way to say, okay, this guy arrives and maybe he can land uh, down down here. Uh, <laughs> It might, might be interesting. Might you know? Give him a chance. Make it tense. Make him somewhat exciting. Now, yeah, that's probably totally, totally non-historical. But again, as stated, <laughs> is not intended as an exact simulation or recreation of the actual historical events, but is designed to provide a competitive game that captures some of the flavor of the battle. And uh, yeah, this would be able to make it competitive. So, uh, if you guys have any thoughts on that, let me know. Um, possible different mechanics on how to. How to do that? Uh, maybe you allow one or two units to try to land there, or something, or, or I don't know. The other part possibility is you could roll the die for each unit to see if they show up. You know, you could say yeah, it doesn't show up the first time you draw this, but the second time you roll a die for each unit, um, and that potentially they could, or you could say you know you roll the die. You know, on a one, they can land here. On a two, they they land by land route three or higher. They don't show up. Yeah, those are different thoughts. So, if you have played this game, I know some of you out there have. Uh, I've had comments on my first uh, play, how to play and play through this. For you know, a couple of people <laughs> that definitely you know imbalance that the toughest one, almost impossible to win. Uh, you know, we, we, we saw some penetration here. We saw that you know, if you can get that earlier, if you can get those plus ones when you're in position, get an early Winnebago with the plus two or something, or even the other ones, um, you could could get lucky and 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 crack the wall or kill enough guys. Probably this this puppy here. <laughs> oh my god, it's a seven. Adding two is a nine instead of just a six like the other ones. Um, they don't have to retreat. <laughs> they ignore that. They ignore the. I mean, this this just dominates. Which I guess that's supposed to. Be, maybe it dominates too much. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Six six range seems crazy long, but again, it's way up there on on that tower. Uh, <laughs> oy oy oy. Maybe it should be a little more inaccurate, though. I don't know, but uh, in this game, your your strength is a combination, you know, of killing power and accuracy. It's like you know, the higher you know, your chance to hit is better, and you know, your chance to kill outright or whatnot. There's there's not a thought of like inaccurate but powerful fire. Um, uh, so. I don't know, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't have to change the system too much. So any of the variants up to this point, I suggested is is not out of the realm of the the, the simplicity of the system, um, but definitely giving more defensive fire to the British, less defensive or more restrictive defensive fire for the Spanish side, uh, maybe staggering like that. Those Saint Genevieve reinforcements start. Start some militia out there a little bit. Uh, that that makes like the what was the card that the Spanish 
of the Spanish, the uh, British had where like they could move farther. Uh, like the Sioux began to move initial two. So early on, zoom, you know, they might be able to rush up and try to, to grab. Uh, one thing I wanted to remember to mention is that uh, I may have forgotten a couple times is when you move on the road and you're moving half, it's not when you enter a zone of control. Now, the, all that says here in this is half movement factor for each X move on the road. In the description of movement, talking about road, um, units following one continuous line of roads and do not enter an enemy zone of control can move two road hexes for each movement factor. Now, I've been interpreting that as when you move along the road for, you're spending a half movement point for each hex, but you can't, if you're entering a zone of control, you have to pay the full cost. That's why. Now, you could interpret that to say, hey, if you are going to enter a zone of control at any time during your turn, which you have to stop, you cannot use road movement bonus at all. That seems a little harsh to me. Um, but, yeah. That's the way I was doing it. You, you'd have to decide how you want to interpret that. Uh, to me, it was like, all right, you can move along the road, and then, you know, that last hex moving, and you're going to have to pay the full cost. So so you, you, you might be able to win. I'm just short enough. I can't move up next to that unit. Um, but if you want to be sort of probably more restrictive, you know, are you moving in, you know, in line or column or how are you advancing again? I don't, I don't know a ton, a ton of the exact maneuver of this. Uh, and again, it would really depend on the the unit. I would say native units should be able to to do it just fine. Um, and again, you'd also think of the, the natives are are, are, are good at, uh, you know, swiftly and quietly moving through the wilderness. Anyway, does 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 that impact them or not? But, uh, you know, there's the rule like you have to stop in under the forest and you can't attack that turn. So it's like if, if you're moving up and there was a unit out here that you're going to move up to close combat, you can't actually move up in close combat out of the forest that you entered that turn. You can enter the forest to get your defensive cover. It's, it's one added to your defense, but you can't close combat out because obviously you can't range attack when you move. But um, <clears throat> that's something you could say, well, Native Americans, maybe they're... But also the, the you know, colonials, American colonials, you know, we have the, the imagery of them being, you know, more guerrilla-type fighters. They've learned these things, not standing in... And regimented lines and such. So anyway, I'm I'm kind of rambling on on beyond the scope of this the action after action of this particular game. Again, so I like the like the series overall, and you don't want to tweak it too much because then you start adding too much complication, and it, and it reduces sort of the, the charm of this thing being able to to play out relatively fast. But Mandarin Mike, Man Came of Madness, <laughs> this last segment is a long one. We're going to edit this all together, though, finishing the playthrough and this after-action review. Uh, so, again, for those of you that have played this, has anyone ever won in the British? Andrew, are you out there? Have you watched this? Has you and our Todd ever had a British win? Um, Have you house ruled anything? Did you make any changes to try to make it more competitive or just enjoy the experience for what it was and they were just getting their butt kicked and say, yay. Um, I do think in a number of these games, sometimes the attacker, if they are a little more deliberate and slow and try to milk the cards, potentially have a better chance. But there's definitely this, this incentive to try to attack early uh, and take advantage of that early bonus. Same thing with Fort Jefferson. Fort Jefferson attack, you know, that one you definitely wanted to try to capture those fleeing citizens or kill them. Um, and a great incentive to try to, there's, there's one near the little, little island and it's trying to get into the fort that if you can try to stop that one, 
because if you don't kill those all, then the you know, sort of only way to win that one as the uh, the British side is you're going to have to take one of those hilltop forts, which were which were you know kind of the, the equivalent of this. This one's even worse in that you know these can result, but they could get disordered. This guy can't even be disordered in that fort. You have to kill it outright. So you have to get that net uh, nine. <laughs> Crazy talk. It's crazy talk. All right. Let's end it there, folks. Mandarin Wake, Man Cave of Menace. So obviously the British lost this one. So in the next battle, in my campaign series of the American Revolutionary War in the Western Frontier, along the Mississippi and including in Florida, the next one is Fort Jefferson Attack. I will be playing that one again. I don't think I'm going to film that one this time. I'll, I'll, I'll do an after action review, I think. Uh, but you know, I, I I filmed it before. I did a how to play last year, and it's part of my uh, series here for doing this. And in my my the War Room live streams, there are ten ten games for the year. Uh, one of their uh, ways to get a uh, or one of the conditions would have a game from from last year uh, repeated on your list. Um, so I will be playing it again. I probably won't film uh, the whole thing, other than maybe an act, action, after action view for this. Uh, so I will probably use my standard uh, card redraw um, as, as their bonus that the uh, American side there. I think I'll either allow them to, you know, when they when they draw a card and if they don't like it, they can draw another one and choose and put one back in the deck at random. Or they can save it to have, force the British to re-roll. So if something that the British roll that they don't like, they can have the, the British side draw another card and then the the, uh, the Americans can decide which, which event happened or something. So, uh, yeah, I think that's what we'll do for, for that one. So uh, that one will definitely not happen in March here. Where, uh, what are we here, the 27th, 28th right now. So uh, in, in April, that will come. And uh, the last one is uh, Pensacola. And I think I'll take a break until May because I believe Pensacola happened. No, no, no. That happened in April. Yes. So we will do that one in April because one of the bonuses on the War Rooms thing is if, if you play one of your games in the month that it actually happened, you can get a bonus drawing for the end of the year if you complete your your, your 10 game list and you have a chance to win a, win a prize. So yeah, I'll have to double check the dates on that. But we'll, 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 we'll make that happen in the correct month. <laughs> so there may or may not be a delay. So uh, we'll definitely Jefferson will happen. I'll play that in April. And you know, like I'll only do an after action review. And the question is whether Pensacola happened in April. I'll also be doing that one or not. So, <sighs> Mandarin Mike, Man Cave of Madness. It is the wee, wee, wee hours of the morning. I've stayed up way too late doing this. <laughs> so, a lot of things that were getting in the way. Finally, needed to get it done. Uh, and uh, I can get this table cleaned up, and my wife will be happier. So, Again, I'd really like to hear from anyone if you what what kind of options that you've tried. I believe one of the people posted they tried doing like the plus one defensive wall and all that kind of stuff instead of a two, and it was still nigh impossible. Uh, certainly, I think if you add <laughs> giving at least say one more defensive, one or two defensive sh shots for the natives, to some restriction on the Spanish. Uh, defensive fire, uh, make that a plus one wall, and maybe make Langlade, you know, appear uh, sooner or more likely, or <laughs> as a combination of naval invasion. I mean, that's a little far-fetched, but that might be fun to, to, to try. Um, you know, keeping this unit back, because, uh, you know, again, if they lose the governor's mansion, that's it. Uh, they're, the, they're starting now. Yeah. If just a couple of guys do a suicidal invasion there, that seems a little crazy, but it could be fun. Anyway, as it is, the replayability on this is like 
not as high as the other ones because it just seems so crazily against the odds. Um, but certainly if you stack it enough in favor of the British, <laughs> is, is it too much, right? Uh, so we'll see. I, 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 I will probably, maybe before the end of the year, try this once more with, with, with that like set of a bunch of rules and see how it feels. All right, folks, take care, y'all. Ciao, and keep your powder dry. Thank you.